Hi, everyone. Hi. Give it a minute to let everyone kind of get in and get settled and have their sound connect. Hi. Awesome. Welcome everyone to the time management workshop. So I'm Allison. I am your student advisor here at the Renison English Language Institute. I just graduated from the University of Waterloo last year and I majored in social development studies. All of the tips that I'm going to share with you today are things that I genuinely wish I used more in university and wish I had learned before I started. So I hope that you guys get a lot out of this and find some tips that you can use throughout your studying. I'm also joined with your peer leader, Laura. And Laura, if you wanna introduce yourself. Yeah, for sure. So um, I see a lot of familiar names here, but my name is Laura and I'm one of the peer leaders this term. Um, I'm in my fourth year of studies at UW, uh, taking psychology and social development studies. Um, and yeah, I'm going to talk a bit about some of the tools I really like to use to manage my time. Thanks, Laura. So kind of jump in here. There's quite a bit to get through. So I just want to ask everyone just to kind of answer in the chat or you can unmute yourself and answer out loud if you wanted. But how do you feel when you don't have enough time? What sort of things kind of go through your mind or do you feel anxious or stressed? I'll give it a couple seconds and let you guys answer. Big old stress fest, definitely me too. Nervous, absolutely, so do I. Normally I feel anxious and stressed, for sure. It's very, very normal to feel these things. Is there anyone that feels kind of a bit of adrenaline when you're pressed for time? Overwhelmed and annoyed, yeah, definitely. These are all super normal ways to feel confused, for sure. Do you want to maybe elaborate on confused a little bit? It's just yeah. Confused. So I want like sometimes sometimes I have like ten subjects to work on, and I don't know what where to start. Definitely <laughs> very fair. I think we've all been there at some point. So hopefully we can get some uh, tips down that will help you to feel less confused and anxious and overwhelmed. So I want to do a quick activity with everyone. Um, it's called a time audit. So you might be wondering what the word audit means, but a time audit is where we figure out where we spend all of our time in a week. So this can kind of back onto uh, Daniel's confused feeling where you sort of sit down and think, this was due five weeks from now, how is it tomorrow? and you haven't even started. So figuring out where that time has gone and how we've spent it is a good way to kind of gain control of our time. I'm going to send a worksheet. You should be able to uh, click that and download it. And hopefully it will work for you. Is everyone able to see my screen here still? 
Perfect. So in a week, you have 168 hours. So you're gonna see that number down at the bottom here. So 168 hours is all of the time that we get 24 hours a day for seven days. So with this sheet, uh, you wanna go through and see how many hours you spend on each thing each day. So for sleep, you wanna put in, and you can follow along on your computer and fill it in if you'd like as well. It's kind of nice to see where everything is and where everyone's at. So for sleep, you should be getting around seven to nine hours. So I'll say I get about eight. Grooming and personal hygiene. So this is like your showering, brushing your teeth in the morning and at night, uh, combing your hair, maybe styling your hair, doing your makeup, all that fun stuff. So roughly like how much time you spend on that in a day. I think I spend maybe about 30 minutes. So I'll say 0.5 hours on that. And then your meals. So if you're cooking a full meal each day, roughly how long you're eating each meal, things like that. So if you're eating about three meals a day, maybe 30 minutes each plus 10 minutes to cook. Um, so you might say maybe about two hours total spent on eating. And then traveling to work or to school. Um, maybe right now, this is a lot easier for everyone because we don't have to go very far to go to school at least. But if you're working a part-time job and you're there a few times a week, so you have to take the bus or you have to walk. Um, for me, if I were to be walking to Renison each day, that would take about 10 minutes. So it's 10 by five. I'll say that's about a whole two hours there and back throughout the week. Um, if you work a part-time job, sometimes you have set hours and sometimes it's a bit flexible, but overall they range maybe about 10 hours in a week, if that's something that you're doing, which I am, so I'll count that. And I work about five hours at my part-time job each week, so I'll add that in. If you're a part of any volunteering or clubs, then you want to make sure that you're adding those, especially if you do them regularly. So maybe you volunteer for one hour a week, you want to put that in. And then your errands. So this is things like grocery shopping, uh, doing your laundry, um, things like that, all your extra cleaning that you have to do around the house. Add that in. So I don't like to spend too much time on any of that. So I'll do maybe an hour and a half for the whole week on cleaning and errands. Um, and then your classes and lectures. So for me, I would kind of count this as maybe my full-time job, but for you guys working or just studying, then you're probably in class for about 20 to 25 hours in a week, right? Kind of close to that. So you'll add that in. And then the time that you are with your family, your friends and socializing, this could depend if you live with your family and friends or if you're living by yourself, it might be different. So however much time you feel like you spent uh, with other people. So maybe you're seeing your family only one hour a week, so add that in. And then whatever time you're spending on a watching TV shows, so um, I don't know if anyone else is watching The Bachelorette, um, but I spend at least two hours a week watching that. So I'll add that in. Um, but this also will be your time spent on social media. So if you are an Instagram addict like myself, then you might add in a lot more time than you think you should. Um, but if you're 
playing video games and things like that as well. You just want to calculate about how long you've been on those and add that into. And then other. So this is just anything else that you might spend your time on. So if you like to read for an hour each night or you like to go for walks or exercise, things like that, you'll add that in there. So what we can see from everything I'm doing right now, I have no time left to study, which is fine for me because I don't have to. But for everyone else, if your number looks like mine and it's in the negatives, then we need to do a little bit of reevaluating and go back and see where we're really spending our time. So something like Maybe I'm realizing that working an extra five hours at a part-time job is too much for me right now. So that's something that I need to take back or I need to reevaluate just where all of my extra time is going and see if there are other ways that I can do these things and complete these tasks that make more sense for me and work in a little bit more of a sustainable way. So I like to use this activity just to give everyone an idea of kind of where that time goes and understand a little more about what we're doing each day and how that works for us and how maybe it isn't working for us and think about the ways that we can kind of change that and do a little more going forward. Was anyone surprised with the result that they got or how much time they're spending on things? I was surprised on my own too, so don't worry. <laughs> awesome. So in person, we would normally swap these with a partner and see if we can make any suggestions on our partner's sheets and kind of decide on ways to work through this together. Sadly, that's not as easy right now, but if you do wanna talk about where your time is, you can always meet with myself or Laura, and we can go through it with you. Or if you have a friend in the class, feel free to message them and kind of become uh, time audit buddies and learn how to uh, manage your time together. So I'm going to go into a couple strategies that will help you manage your time well. And I'll, send, I'll be sending a bunch of files in the chat Feel free to share them and they'll also be posted on the hub later. And if you need me to slow down or you have any questions at any point, don't hesitate to uh, message and just send a message in the chat, uh, send your questions or just unmute yourself and start talking and I will gladly take a step back and we can work through it together. So the first strategy I'd like to talk about is making a master schedule. So a master schedule can look very overwhelming at the start, but they are quite simple to use. So this is where you're going to block in all of the things that you do within a week. So when you're filling in your schedule, you want to block in the activities that are unchangeable. So these are things like your class schedule, your work, any appointments you have, your travel time and uh, your sleep. So you typically sleep around the same time each day. You are going to have classes at the same time each week unless your teacher says otherwise. So these are the things that you know you can't move around. Uh, then you want to block in the activities that are, are a little bit more flexible. So like eating or exercising, um, running your errands, cleaning, any group work activities that you have, you'll put those in as well. And then last, you want to uh, take note of all of the empty space. So then you wanna block in some studying time and any other activities. So like leisure time, spending time with friends and family. I did make a, kind of a sample here, you guys wanna see. So this might be what your schedule might look like a little bit more. So 
So I kind of base this around my schedule in my last year. So I wake up around 8 a.m. each day and eat breakfast. And then I spend about 30 minutes uh, getting ready in the morning, have some spare time in the mornings, which I really like to have just to relax. And then walk to campus, have a class. I give myself about 30 minutes for lunch and then blocked out an hour for studying. And then after I study, I'll eat dinner, take the bus for 15 minutes, and then go to work for the night. And then I'm in bed by 11 to sleep. But I also took a couple of the sections and added time for friends. So you wanna make sure that you're actually scheduling the time that you are going to be having your fun and taking part in maybe some self-care activities or just relaxing, because that stuff is just as important as studying and being productive. Because if you don't take the time for yourself and you don't take the time to connect with others and have that social part of life, then you're going to have what's called burnout. And when you're burnt out, you won't have any productivity left and it will be very difficult. Yeah, does that kind of make sense for you guys? I'll send, yeah. the, I'll, send the, I lost my chat. <laughs> I'll send the file in the chat. It looks a little bit different, but it works the same. And you can just add in what you're doing on a daily basis or a weekly basis. And uh, it's always good to have such as, sorry. Uh, I'd like to say something. Actually, I want to share something. Yeah. So actually, just like you, I'm a social media addict. So it's very, very difficult to not procrastinate. And just like, I'll just watch some reels and afterwards I'll, you know, so it's very difficult to manage uh, time. So how do we stop doing that? Like, what is the first step? Yes. Uh, that's a really great question. I'm genuinely still learning what the first step might be and how to actually implement it in my daily life. So uh, Laura is going to be talking about a couple of good apps that can help with managing your social media addiction later on. But I think the most important thing is to just sort of tell yourself that you need the break and to stop using it. Um, something I've found that works is deleting the app from my phone and un, what's it called logging out of uh, each social media and telling my phone to forget all of my usernames and passwords so I can't go on and check it very easily. So if I even Google Instagram on my phone right now, I won't see anything except for the login screen. And I know I'm too lazy to put in my uh, username and password every time. So that might be something that helps you as well. Yeah, okay, thank you. No problem. Yeah, Laura brought up that the screen time on your iPhones can restrict your time on different apps each day. And Android does have similar functions as well. So that could be something you use as well. Thanks, Laura. So another uh, strategy that you could use is to make a daily to-do list and schedule. Um, a daily to-do list can outline a group of specific tasks that you want to complete by the end of the day. So your tasks should be small and you should stay away from things like write essay and uh, they should be very like, easy to do almost. So you want it to be a bite-sized version of the bigger task. So uh, Benjamin Franklin used to actually use a lot of to-do lists in his daily life. And they looked a little bit different. They looked a little bit different than maybe the ones that we use because he would always write on it um, what he wanted to do in the day and uh, what he did to change the world, basically. So what was his positive impact that he had each day? 
yours might look a bit different when you're just talking about doing your homework or something like that. So I can send a weekly and daily to-do list in the chat here. So on there, we can see I guess we can't. Um, on there, it will have a section to put all of your bigger tasks or future tasks in the weekly section. And then a list view, basically, of what you want to do in a single day. So as you go through, you just check off or cross off the uh, tasks that you've already completed. And then you get to see visually what you've done and uh, what you need to do. <laughs> now, 10 to 4 is definitely not enough sleep. Remember, 7 to 8, 7 to 9 hours. That's ideal. <laughs> So the third strategy is one that will be very helpful for you guys, especially moving into your final assignments and uh, when you start on main campus classes, and that's planning backwards for major deadlines. So backwards planning is a way of organizing many tasks that go into a big assignment or event uh, and making them smaller. So if you're looking at maybe writing an essay, you start at the very end when your essay is due and you work backwards to see what steps you need to do first before you can get to the final essay. And you Waterloo has a really great website for this. Um, I'll send that in the chat there. It's the library's assignment planner. So if you go on, you'll see this page here. And then you get to pick what kind of assignment you're working on at that time. So say we're looking at a research paper. So you're going to click on that. And we'll say that your instructor gave it to you today, but your lecture was very late in the day. So you just want to go to bed after class. So you're going to get started on your assignment bright and early the next day. And your assignment is due maybe three weeks from now. So August 11th. And then you hit generate plan. And when you scroll down, it will go through. it'll go through all of the steps that you need to do to complete your essay. So once you get started, you wanna have that part done um, by July 24th. So you have about two days to complete this and you just go through each step. So understanding your assignment, conducting your research, narrowing down your topic and developing your research questions. I'm going to stop and share and reshare that so you guys can see this. Is that better? Right. So yeah, you'll open all of the steps. Um, it goes through the step one of getting started. So you go through each point that it gives you here. And once you're done that, you've completed already 10% of your assignment within the first two days. Um, and then it outlines your research, the organizing of your essay, writing your first draft and revising it and gives you a bunch of fun and useful little uh, links as well to help you with each step. So if you're not sure on how to start writing, then it gives you the PDF to go through that. 
Um, you'll also be able to do a search uh, statement worksheet and things like that to kind of help you get on your way with each step of your assignment writing. So this works for pretty much any kind of assignment that you'll be given at Waterloo. So it's a really great resource to have. If anyone knows how to start a presentation exactly where I left off, please let me know. <laughs> um, if you go to the share button next time, um, you can do from current slide. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> no problem. Took me a while to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> You're also learning. All right, so I do just wanna do a quick activity with you guys and ask, uh, do you have any other strategies that you can think of that maybe we didn't talk about or something that's worked for you in the past? If you want to answer out loud or just in the chat, go right ahead. I once tried to do the each day's work in the same day, but it's so hard because sometimes you have important homework, you have to finish them, or like the one of the courses you have like very soon, like very minimum, very little time to do it, do the assignment. Yeah. But, uh, in in high school, I t it was uh, a good like it, I could do it in high school, but I don't know if it, in university is that possible. Yeah, it's totally fair. And something you might learn is that you'll try what you used in high school, and you'll just have to adapt it and change it a little bit to work a little bit better in high in university. Another thing is to like when you do block out your time. Uh, if you have a lot of extra time or you notice that one day is less filled than another, you can use this time to make up for any missed productivity that you did early on. So what we call it is flex hour. And sometimes like when I use it, um, I'll leave an hour at the end of my day, just in case an activity earlier took too much time and then I can make up for it later on. Does that kind of make sense? Yes. Yes. Uh, I always had some problem with time management thing. So uh, yeah. everything you say makes sense for me. But I, I like uh, the important part is to put it into action. Definitely. And we'll talk about a couple of different ways to do that as well. I know Minji shared that they uh, block, block fill a schedule. So in every 20 minutes, they'll use a different color for different activities. That's really cool. And someone's talking about forest, which Laura will bring up later, which is awesome. That's one that I've used a lot as well. Yeah, I think that um, one of my own um, uh, time management plans is to, it is actually from one of my peer mentors and um, it, it is to print out the outlines of each courses, like print it out on paper and you can, you know, use pen to like circle something out and notes to it, like, so and add deadlines onto it and when you write it down, you remember it more, clear, more clearly and you can um, like get a very straightforward, straightforward um, impression on it. And you do not have to search on the website to get it every time. And it is really easy because you have to hold, because you have to only have to you know, 
like take it on your hand and you don't have to spend so much time like searching on learn to see the deadlines. So that's take, that's very convenient. I tried that and yeah, and I think that's a really useful uh, skill. Oh, that's awesome. That's a really great type or technique as well, for sure. Just printing it out and having it all physically written out for you. I love that. And Zhang Yin said, uh, spend a fixed time on hobbies and things. You don't do that in working hours. Get up about 6 a.m. and spend the time with your hobby time. That's awesome. Definitely making the time and adapting your schedule to having more time throughout your day is a great way to do it as well. Okay. So I do just want a little bit more participation. Thank you all so much already. You guys have been so great. So why are some of the reasons that we do procrastinate? I don't think it is just because we love watching Instagram reels that much. So <laughs> what are some other reasons that you guys can think of? Napping too long, definitely. I did that today, to be honest. <laughs> Sometimes when you're nervous that you'll do poorly on an assignment, you can continue to put it off. Uh, I think to maybe have, uh, 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 sorry, I, I'll just say it again. You can sh share if you'd like. Uh, I think uh, we try to indulge in small, like a uh, small amount of, in trust uh, by that I mean like it's a happiness of maybe one hour or two hour we don't try to think like for our future maybe does that make sense so you're looking for like an instant gratification yeah. rather than that's the word I was looking for yeah. yeah definitely no you just want to be satisfied right now and that's it I'm yeah. definitely the same way and someone said uh, perfectionism is definitely a big one as well. So some reasons I came up with was that a task might seem too difficult and we want to avoid failure. Um, we might feel like we don't have enough time to complete the task. Sometimes our mental health is just not doing too great at that point and it becomes very difficult for us to focus or to get the motivation to work through something or we're not interested in the task or the topic, it's just kind of boring to us. There might be too much pressure from family or from your instructors or even from yourself. Like you guys are saying to be more perfect and to do the assignment at 100%. And sometimes the task just doesn't feel rewarding. So you might not be able to see kind of what Ananya said to see like the actual reward and the benefit that's going to come at the end of the task. You want it to happen right now. So some ways that we do procrastinate, which I'm sure everyone's familiar with, are cell phones, social media, and we've talked about texting or talking. I know my mom knows that I have been procrastinating if I call her more than twice in one week. Um, playing games, reading the news. Sometimes the news just seems a lot more interesting when you have a lot on your plate. Other ways are being on the computer and playing video games, watching TV and movies, socializing with friends, shopping, especially online shopping right now. I know that always catches me off guard. And sleeping. Um, people like to do things that I like to call a stress nap. So when you feel a little too overwhelmed, you'll just lay down and take a nap rather than facing the task at hand. And sometimes that is good to take that rest, but if you make it too much of a habit, then it does take away from the benefits of having a midday nap sometimes. So I really like this picture, uh, procrastinate now and panic later. Definitely something I think all of us can relate to. 
So making sure that you're actually doing the things and avoiding procrastination. Of course, that's what everyone is here to learn. So here are some kind of simple ways before I pass it on to Laura. One is to follow a schedule. So we gave you a couple of resources to use for that. Simply writing down a schedule and having it somewhere visible can help you to stay on track with it. Uh, breaking assignments down into smaller tasks so that backwards planning that we were talking about, that's always a good way as well so that it doesn't feel as scary and daunting when you start working on an assignment. Rewarding yourself with enjoyable activities after the task. So maybe working out, going for a walk, or having a really good snack. Removing the temptation. So kind of like what we were talking about with Instagram, um, deleting an app from your phone or leaving your phone in another room can definitely help with that. Taking frequent breaks. So most of us can only concentrate on something for a maximum of 50 minutes, so not even a full hour. And at that point, you need at least a five minute break. So understanding what your focus limit is and scheduling those breaks into your study time will help. Working with a friend, so misery loves company. Another way is to work in maybe a library where you're surrounded by people being productive. So their energy kind of reflects on you and you feel like you need to be productive as well so that you're not distracting other people. Telling other people your plan kind of makes you feel more responsible to them. So if I have a big assignment coming up and I tell my roommate about my assignment, maybe tomorrow she'll look at me playing video games and say, Allison, what about your assignment? Why aren't you working on that? So then I'll start to feel guilty and I'll start planning on how I'm going to start my assignment and get to work faster. A big part is also to just forgive yourself and to understand that this is a big skill that takes your entire life to, to practice and to work on and to perfect. I don't think anyone ever actually perfects time management, but it does take so long to really get good at it and to understand how it works and how it's going to work for you, especially because our lives and our days are changing so frequently. So yeah, mistakes will happen, but what we need to do is learn from our mistakes and work on being a little bit more productive later on and changing the course of our action. And now I will pass it on to Laura so that she can talk about some organizational tools. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, so over the next few slides, I'll be talking about different tools, specific tools you can use to organize your time and avoid procrastination. So you can move to the next, thank you. Um, I don't know why the title hasn't come up. Maybe click, yeah, <laughs> okay, oops. Um, so the first uh, tool that I really like to use are Kanban boards. And so you can use these to, um, break down your smaller tasks, like Allison was saying. So instead of just planning out to write your essay, you can plan out to start your introduction or write one body paragraph or do some research on your topic, for instance. And so how this works is you can create different columns, um, such as to do, doing, and done. And a physical method of this is just grab some sticky notes and write down what tasks you have to do, whether that's an entire task, like, um, like I don't know, go buy this at the grocery store or breaking down big tasks into smaller things like that essay example. And so you will put the task in the to-do section um, when you have yet to do it. When you start it, you move it to doing and then when you complete it, you'll move it to done. And this really helps you track your progress and manage your to-do lists um, in a bit more of a visual way. And so for those of us who are very visual learners, um, this is a great option for you to use in order to remember what you're working on and really feel like you're making progress there. And I think click once more, thanks. Um, one way that I really like to use Kanban boards are um, virtually. So I use Trello.com for my organization. 
And this is actually my board that I use for work. So you can see, I guess, a little bit of what I'm working on. Um, and so I like to divide my tasks into previous week, weeks completed, done. Uh, done is the recently completed tasks that I've finished, to be completed, which is my to-do list, um, in progress, which are the tasks that I'm working on in the moment, and the parking lot, which are tasks that I'm waiting for help with. So for instance, um, I might, in my to be completed, um, for instance, you see the time management workshop that we're at right now. Um, I should have moved it into in progress um, because I have finished it. And then while I was waiting maybe for Allison to answer a question of mine, I might move it into the parking lot so that when I look back later, I know um, what exactly I can be working on in that moment and what I might need to work on a bit later once I hear back from somebody. And so this can be a really good method for in school as well. If you have an assignment and you have a question that you asked your teacher and you're waiting to hear back from them, you can move that assignment into your parking lot and work on something else and then move it back when your teacher gets back to you. Um, it's just a great way to track what you're doing and remember where you're at on everything. Okay, so the benefits of Kanban, uh, like I said, is that it's a visual aid. So you can really see what you're working on and see your progress. Um, this can help you feel a greater sense of accomplishment when you complete a task. I know for me, I really like, um, like when I was a kid, I liked getting that gold sticker and that continues today when I get to move my um, <laughs> project into my done section. Um, it really feels nice to be clearing out my Kanban board and this could be a good option for you as well if you like that sense of gratification. Um, I also use it when I'm working, like right now, um, to show employers my organization skills. So a really good feature of Trello, for instance, is that you can share it with other people. So um, if you are working on a group project, you can share it with your teammates, or uh, you can share it with your instructor, or in my case, you can share it with your employer, and that shows them what exactly you're working on and the progress that you're making. Um, and for me, this has been really helpful in lots of job interviews as well as really demonstrating that I have good organization skills. So you could try that out as well. Um, and I also like online Kanban boards because they can be accessed on a variety of devices. So um, I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm out and about and then remember, oh wait, where did I get with this assignment or when is this due? Um, and so with Trello, I can easily just log in on my phone and see um, where I'm at with something or if a task is waiting on somebody to get back to me um, and then go about my day. So it's nice to have everything saved there and easy to access. Next, we're gonna do a little poll. So um, I think we kind of touched on this a bit earlier, but do you schedule how long you study or work for? Give it a few more seconds for the last few people. All right, so the majority is sometimes, me as well. Um, next up we have yeses and we have uh, one no. So um, I guess moving forwards, um, for those who are doing sometimes or the one no, you might want to take a look at um, the option of using a Pomodoro timer. And so, oh, <laughs> thanks. Um, like Ann was talking about before, um, there's quite a lot of options for this in terms of apps, but basically how this works is that you schedule when you work and for how long. And it's super customizable. 
typically people use it to work for 25 minutes and then take a short five minute break. And this is re usually repeated four times until you take a longer 15 to 30 minute break. Um, and so what you can do is just set a timer or you can use um, different apps that will actually set everything for you. And that could be a good way to kind of put your phone aside. So if you move to the next slide, uh, going into some benefits of this, it can help you better understand how long different tasks take you to complete. So I don't know about you, but I've definitely worked on different projects where I thought, oh, this is gonna be a breeze and uh, this is just gonna take me like an hour max. And then I found myself doing it for several hours and wishing that I had a better understanding of how long things would take me. And through using a Pomodoro method, I've realized that sometimes, like for instance, my statistics homework takes me much longer than I always think it's going to. So I always schedule now my time for that a bit longer than what I immediately think it will take. Um, it can also reduce your distractions. So for those of you who are saying that your phone and social media frequently distracts you, this can be a good option as you can set that timer, put your phone away and work and know that you will get a notification for when you can take a break. Because I know sometimes, at least for me, when I don't have that sense of, I know exactly when I'm going to get a break, I kind of give myself breaks a bit too frequently. <laughs> Um, and it provides you that time to not worry about work. So when you finally get that break, that is your break and you know that you've earned it and you can use that time however you'd like to really have a rest. This in the long run can help maintain your focus and get you into a routine so that you can focus on things for longer over time. So as we discussed a bit earlier, there's a few apps um, available. I've put two here that are two of my favorites. Um, and so the first, like we were talking about, is Forest. This is a really cute app where you plant a tree for each study session that you have um, that you do not get distracted. So it kind of is um, an incentive to work for that amount of time because you don't want your forest to die and you want to keep getting more trees. Um, and you can visualize your progress by seeing your forest grow and seeing all of the new trees that you get from studying hard. Um, an app that I use as well is called Focus Tomato. You can get it on your phone or um, tablet and you can set your own time to work and how long you'd like a break. And they have the option for you to either work in silence or you can have different background noise or music playing. And so I really like this, especially during the pandemic because um, before COVID, I really liked working in libraries and um, in coffee shops, but now that's uh, something I do much less frequently. But through this app, they actually have um, coffee shop sounds where you kind of hear a bit of like background noise and coffee machines going. So it feels like you're in that space and they have library sounds or just like gentle piano music that you can play to help you um, focus a bit better. Awesome. Thank you, Laura. I know forest is one that I really like to use as well. I just love seeing all the little trees. And then I feel really guilty if I open my phone because I know the tree dies if I do. So no, it's super helpful. And I haven't heard of Trello before. So that's actually something that I'm going to start looking into and using as well. So just to wrap up, uh, learning to manage your time is a skill that takes so much practice and so much time to get used to. And like I said before, you have to adapt to what your life is doing at that moment and what's happening. So the strategies that you learned today should be able to help you manage your time more effectively, but also everyone is different. So a strategy that works well for someone else might not work for you. So you're gonna to need to try a bunch of different things until you find something that sticks. So even the strategies that I shared today might not work for any of you. 
in some cases, but uh, maybe what Laura shared will help a little bit more or you'll find your own. And we're happy to listen to any of the ideas that you guys can come up with or any other ways that you know. So your peer leaders, Laura, Lucky, and Wai, as well as myself, Ryan, Alex, and Cece are always available for one-on-one -on -one meetups. So if you want to meet with any of us and talk about some strategies and other ways to manage your time, then definitely book one of those. And I do have a quick exit survey for you. I'm gonna send that in the chat. It's super duper quick, takes about two minutes. So you guys can do that now or in a little bit. Um, but that is kind of all we have for you. If you have any questions or you wanna chat about anything, feel free to stick around. We'll be here up until 11. Um, so yeah, thank you all so much for coming out. And I hope that you learned some different ways to manage your time today. Thank you very much. Thank you. I just installed the, both of the apps. I will see which one I like the more. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, let me know too which one you like best. Okay, Laura, I will text you. <laughs> okay, great. Nice seeing you, Daniel. Bye. Bye. Bye.